Let's face it, writing a book is hard work, but it's not impossible. In today's video, I want to help you get from the blank page to a full manuscript. That sounds good to you? Then keep on watching. So in my last video, I gave you 10 steps on what it takes to self-publish your book. The first step was to write your novel. Well, in that video, I shared that I was going to go more in depth into each of those steps. And today's video is all about that very first step, what it takes to actually write a novel. Now, I am not a university and I, it's going to take a lot longer than one video to show you how to write a novel. But what I intend to do is just give you tips that I've learned along the way, tips that I am still trying to apply to my own books as I learn and grow in my own writing journey. So I hope that it does help you in your writing journey. Let's jump right into the very first thing that I think you need to uh, be aware of when you first start writing a novel, and that is understanding your genre. It is very important that you know right from the beginning if your book is going to be um, obviously fiction and not fiction, and then get into the subgenres, which is going to be, is it going to be a mystery, a thriller, a fantasy? Is it going to be a romance novel? So it's very important that you understand your genre before you actually sit down to start writing because it is going to make a difference on the topics that you cover, the language that you use. It's going to just make a huge difference, obviously, in your overall novel. So the second thing you need to know is your audience. Are you writing for middle grade, young adult, or adult? Again, this is very important because you need to know what topics and what language you can cover in each of these um, audiences they're all different and what you cover in middle grade obviously is not going to be the same thing that you cover in adults vice versa and the things that you may cover in a young adult novel are not probably going to be the same thing that you cover in a middle grade especially when it comes to romance so it is very important that you understand the audience that you're writing for the third thing that I think you need to consider before you actually sit down to write is your plot I'm sure, like most of us, we have some idea uh, brewing in our minds that we want to write a novel about. We want to just get to it and start writing. But even if you don't outline, I think it's important for you to, I don't know, just make some sort of, even on a, on a notebook like this, just write down your ideas, get really clear on what it is that you want your story to be, and I think it's going to help you a lot. So when it comes to plot ideas, you can do, do so in just a sentence or two so that you know exactly where your story, um, the, the main idea of your story. So again, it doesn't have to be this huge outline. It can just be a sentence or two. So I recommend that maybe writing the plot, you do so by uh, saying something along the lines of the inciting incident followed by the problem. For instance, you can say, uh, girl, realizes she's in love with her best friend, but now it's too late because now he's engaged to someone else. So inciting incident and then the problem. So that can at least give you some idea of what your plot is all about. I think having some idea of your plot is definitely going to help you a lot when you sit down to write. Number four is knowing your theme. I think understanding the overall lesson that your character is going to learn is a great way to build this character and your story because this theme can potentially pop up throughout your novel in different ways from the beginning to the end until your character finally learns the theme of the novel. So get really clear on that theme and I think it will help you drive your story all the way from the beginning to the end. Number five is knowing the tone of your novel. For example, um, if you are writing a mystery, then you don't want to have a comedic tone because then your audience, your reader is going to be confused when they're reading. They're not going to know. Um, you're going to try to say something serious and because you've been trying to be funny the entire time, they're not going to understand the story and what you're trying to do, where you're trying to guide them to. So it's very important that your tone matches the genre that you're writing. That's not to say that you can't have some comedic relief. Like usually there's a sidekick that maybe has funny uh, tendencies. So you can have have that character that perhaps you know is lighthearted and 
is funny, but the overall tone of your novel, you need to know what it is and make sure that it matches your story, your plot. Next is your setting. World building is actually really fun, but I know it's really challenging, especially when it comes to writing fantasy. I have not written a fantasy novel per se yet. I did start, it, start writing one a couple of years ago during NaNoWriMo, and I found it really, really difficult to keep track, even though I had this binder that I was keeping all the um, fantasy elements and all the weapons and the world, all these things that had to do with this fantasy world, I found it really challenging to keep it all in my mind and just try to keep track of it. But even if you're not writing fantasy, for example, my next novel, the one after Between Us, the setting is in Hawaii. So it is very important for me to set that mood for my readers so that they too feel like they're in Hawaii. So make sure that I do all the elements, that I do all my research, all, all the things that people think of when it comes to Hawaii. I need to make sure that I include a ton of them so that the reader gets immersed in my story and they actually feel like they are there too. So setting is another way that you can just build your story where your reader just falls in love with your story story. So the next part is characters. And when it comes to characters, I want you to ask yourself these questions. What does your character want? What's standing in their way? And why don't they have it all ready? These are questions that I believe are in Save the Cat. And if you guys don't know this already, I have a ton of videos or I don't know a ton of videos, but I have a few videos where I talk about Save the Cat Writes a Novel. It's the best book I have ever read on writing and outlining and just figuring out all the beats that our novels should have. And if you are interested in any of that, check out these videos. They're all about how I outline and how I figured out all the beats of the novel using Save the Cat Writes a Novel. But I believe those those are some of the questions that she uh, states in, those in that book. So I think it's really important because it helped me understand my character's motives, who they are, what do they want, what, why don't they have it. Understanding those things are just going to drive your story and it's going to make things easier, especially when it comes to that middle portion of the novel which is always the most difficult the the part where the novels tend to drag more because you kind of we're all excited about the beginning and we know the end but the middle part is always really difficult at least for me it is so knowing my characters wants and why she doesn't have it helps me come up with different plot stories in the middle of the novel. So those are some of the questions that you can ask yourself when it comes to understanding your character at the start of your novel before you start actually writing. You can also decide who they are at the beginning of the novel and who you know they will be at the end of the novel. Granted, the more time I spend with my characters, the more I get to know them. So those questions are a little easier to answer once I'm more into the novel, into the writing phase of um, writing the novel. It's so good to get these questions answered as best you can at the beginning because I think it's just going to get your juices flowing and it's just going to give you ideas for more character building. And I think overall it's just going to help you write your novel faster, better, and more efficient. Then you can get into the fun part of creating characters. At least that's the fun part for me, which is creating their name, their ethnicity, their flaws, their speech patterns, their accents. Um, all these things just add to your character. The more things that you can add to your character, the more your reader will be able to connect with them. And I'm not suggesting that you just pile on a bunch of flaws on this character, on your characters, but just make them as unique as possible. I've said this in another video, and if I remember which one, I'll pop it up here. But um, basically, you can add like speech patterns, like they can speak you know, one of your characters can actually speak really fast and another one has, um, you know, a stutter or an accent and you can make them from different parts of the world and you can give them a scar or you can give them freckles. I mean, the more you can give them to make them come alive, to be more like how we all are, the better 
it will be for your story and the better experience that your reader will have with your story. And finally, I am going to recommend that before you sit down to write that you actually outline. I think some of the misconceptions that come with outlining is that it stops your creative freedom and that it stops you from just being creative and that you're stuck in this rigid outline and that is not true. I was actually a pantser. I wrote my first two novels and my nonfiction without outlining and I can't believe that I did that I just you know it just makes it a little bit harder I think to know all the things that I just went over with you to know your theme your tone your setting your um your characters their motives pacing I mean there's so much that goes into outlining and just getting really clear on your plot that I think that outlining just makes things so much easier for you as a writer so even if you are not a plotter and you've never outlined before I encourage you to at least give it a shot even if it's just with the things I just mentioned if you just write it down you will see that it doesn't restrict you your creative freedom at all that I think it actually motivates you and inspires you to write even more like I've said before I think save the cat is one of the best books out there on outlining I've done like I said I've done videos on it so if you want to check some of those videos I will link them here and I will link them in the box in the description box below for you guys to check out because I think that book is just everything when it comes to writing well I hope that you found this video helpful let me know in the comments below if you have any qu specific questions regarding tone and theme and character building and world building and all those things because I love talking about all the things when it comes to outlining your novel well you guys that is it if you found this video helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up and that you share it with all your writerly friends because it does help me out a lot I appreciate your presence here so much you have no idea how much I appreciate each and every one of you and if you are not subscribed yet please make sure you do so on your way out I post weekly videos just like this so until next time stay safe